Lesson 7-3, Multiplying Monomials. So in the last um, two lessons, we discussed polynomials and monomials, binomials, trinomials. And then we talked about adding and subtracting polynomials. And now we're going to multiply polynomials. And we're going to start with multiplying monomials. And then we'll work up from there. So we first need to understand exponents because exponents are a large part of the monomials and the multiplying monomials process. So we have our exponential notation where our top smaller number is the exponent and our bottom number that's larger is called the base. Exponents are also called powers. So those two words are interchangeable. And they represent repeated multiplication, which we have discussed in previous lessons. For example, 3 to the 4th, 2 to the 6th, or 5 to the 3rd. 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3, so, the, oops, times 3, 4 threes, not 3 times 4, but 3 times 3, 4 times, which is 81. 2 to the 6th gives me... 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, and then 5 to the 3rd is 3 fives. So 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So this is what we're talking about when we're doing exponents. Um, when we multiply monomials, we use the property of multiplying exponents with common bases. And so what that means go back real quick. This part, the base, will match. And that has to happen in order to multiply the exponents. So if I have a to the m times a to the n, what I do is I add the exponents. So for example, x to the fifth times x to the eighth, or x to the fourth times x squared. The reason this works is because x to the fifth is 5x's. And then x to the 8th is 8x's. And we're multiplying them all together in a long string, and so you have 13x's. So that's x to the 13th. Well, you don't have to write all of these out and then count them up. You can just add them together. x to the 13 is the same thing as x to the 5 plus 8. Here I have x to the 4th times x squared, that's x to the 4th plus 2, so that will be x to the 6th. And if I had written it out, I'd have 4x's and then 2 more x's. Now if the monomial have more than one variable or have coefficients, you multiply the parts that are alike. So for example, oops, sorry about that, I have 3x squared y times 6x to the 3rd y squared, so I'm going to do 3 times 6, that gives me 18 x squared times x to the third. So I'm going to, I'll write this down long ways first and then we'll simplify it just so you can see the process. And this was 3 times 6. Okay, x squared times x to the third. I add the exponents, so 2 plus 3 gives me x to the fifth. And then y times y squared. If there's no exponent, it's an invisible 1. So it's 1 plus 2, that's y to the third. Okay, so here are some more examples. I have 2 times 3, that's 6. And x times x squared, that's 1 plus 2, so that's 3. 2 times 6 is 12. x squared, there's no other x portion that I'm multiplying by, so I just carry that over. And then y times y to the third, that's 1 plus 3, so that gives me 4. I have 4 times 2 is 8. x squared times x to the fourth, so 2 plus 4 is 6. And then y squared times y to the fourth, 2 plus 4 is x. So why don't you go ahead and pause for a moment and try these. When you're done, unpause the video and come back and check and see if you got the same answers that I'm going to have put up.
Okay, so I went ahead and I wrote in the multiplication lines. You don't have to do this, but sometimes it helps just to keep track of what's being multiplied by what. And for the first one, I get 12x to the 6th. For the second one, I get 30x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. For the last one, I get 42x to the 6th, y to the 6th. 